Welcome to the third Google SketchUp object importing tutorial. This tutorial is about adding more complex collision to your models. The first thing that we need to do is draw a rectangle that's roughly the same size as your model. In this case it's the same Mustang that we've used already. This time we use the push pull tool. Only pull it up until it's level with the windscreen. The reason for this is it will be creating a separate rectangular shape for the upper half of the vehicle. So that's it, level with the windscreen now. And then just use the push pull tool to get the other faces level with the car. Now again, it doesn't matter if some of the car is showing through the collision. In fact, if some of the car is showing through the collision, it means that your characters will be able to stand closer to it. So it may be something that you want to do. Okay, and that's that's that done. So what you need to do now is we're going to do the incline for the bonnet. So go to the top view and use the line tool to draw a line that's level with the bottom of the windscreen. And then if you rotate round and select the front face at the bumper and then use the scale tool and click on the top middle, you can drag it down and form that incline for the bump, uh, for the hood. Okay, that's a little bit off, so just drag it up a bit. Okay, that's fine. So what we need to do now is get the second rectangular shape drawn. Now you can use the rectangle tool here, but I'm going to use the line tool again. So just draw a line from the bottom of the windscreen to the rear of the vehicle on either side and try and make it as close to the edge of the car as possible. Then click on the bit in the middle and use the push pull tool to pull it up again. This time only drag it up as far as the top of the windows. This will allow us to mark their position much more easily. Okay, so go back to the top of here and use the pencil to mark the top of the windows. Okay, we'll now use the push pull tool to push the back so that it's level with the rear of the vehicle. Like so. Lift up the middle so that it's level with the roof. and you could either delete the bit at the front or you can use the push pull tool to push it down until it's level with the rest of the body because that section isn't really needed Okay, and the last thing we want to do now is go back to the top view and mark the rear of the windscreen or the rear of the rear screen ok that's not quite the right place while using the line tool, if you press spacebar or escape, it will it will stop it being selected. So if you start drawing a line in the wrong place, it will snap back to the select tool. Okay, what we need to do now is just get the new faces in order. So just click on one corner and then the other, and it will draw a line, and if possible, it will also draw a face. So as you can see, by drawing those two lines, I've created the three faces for the windscreen. And I'll do the same for the rear screen. So just join the corners up and there we, ha there we have it. What we need to do now is get the front of the vehicle to be the correct kind of shape. So what we can do is chop off the two corners at the front of the vehicle. Go to the standard top view and create a line that's level with the edge of the wheel arches. Okay, That's roughly the right place and then draw two diagonal lines at either corner okay so like that and the same at the other side okay okay so what we need to do now is take these lines 
down the front on both sides so click on that intersecting point and draw it down to the bottom like so okay, that's the front face done and we need to do the same for the two sides that's it done so and then we just do the same for the bottom okay once we have these intersecting points joined together we can delete the corners so what you need to do is use the select tool and click on an edge so click on the edge and press delete click and then delete simple as that Okay, do the same for the other side, just click and delete. Okay, that's the front of the vehicle, much more car like shape. What we need to do now is get the faces in order. The faces need to be either three or four sided, and as you can see, this one here is five sided. So if you take the, the line tool and draw a line down, you can turn it into two four-sided faces. Okay, do the same at the other side. Okay, and if you get two lines coming down either side, you might as well just join them up. Okay, so we'll join up the ones that we created for the front of the vehicle, like so, and the ones that we just done there. Okay, as you can see, they're all four-sided now at the bottom. Okay, if you right click on the vehicle itself and not the collision, so the select tool and right click, you can hide it by going to hide. Okay, that makes things a bit easier. So what we'll do now is we'll clear up this six sided shape that's in the top group. So use the select tool and click on the existing lines and delete them. And then use the line tool to create two vertical lines and along with it a bunch of four sided shapes. Okay, so those three at the back are all four sided. And do the same at the other side. Okay, and that's more four sided shapes. Okay, so that's the faces taken care of. They're all either three or four sided. What we need to do now is isolate the top from the bottom. So if you use the select tool and click each face and then hold control and click another face you can select the entire top of the vehicle oh, I'll miss the face so I'll just use the line tool to tidy that one up to four sided shapes okay and just continue selecting so just control and click to select multiple faces okay that's them all selected and just right click on them and make them a group this will allow us to move it about or in this case hide it Okay, now these aren't needed, so just click on the edges and delete them, like we did for the front of the vehicle. And do the same for these lines, because they're not needed. Okay, and if you just click le left click and select all of them, you can make them a group as well, just to make things a bit easier later. And if you go to edit, unhide and last it will show the first group we made okay and if we just hide the second group now okay so just select tool left click right click and hide okay and we'll just have a quick look underneath as you can see there's no face on the bottom edge which is something we'll need to rectify and another thing is, when you have two collision groups like this sitting on top of each other, it's best to have a small gap. It isn't entirely necessary, but it does yield the best results. So what we can do is just draw a line around the bottom of the group. Okay, just in parallel with the existing line.
Okay, if you're wondering why I'm zoomed in so closely, SketchUp uh, snaps to corners very quickly. Um, so this can be very, very difficult if you're not zoomed right in. Okay, so just continue the line all the way around this collision group. That's it done now. So then we just use the select tool and delete the horizontal and vertical edges that we no longer need. All we need to do though is right click and click explode. This allows you to edit a group. So just click on them and delete them. Just like we did with the front of the vehicle. a bit difficult to get so I'll just do this side first oh, helps you click on the right area of the screen just take care of those last two now okay and as you can see that's also created the face for the bottom of the object which is four-sided and if we just zoom out and then unhide the last object that'll bring back the bottom collision as you can, we can see they're both there they, neither of them have a face of more than four sides and there's a small gap between them. So just select them all, go to plugins, and export them the same way you did in the last tutorial. Now I'm just going to fast forward through this since it's something you've done before. Okay, as you can see I'm using the Mustang 3 file again. That's why it's quite handy to save a version of the model that doesn't have any collision. So if you need to make any changes or additions, you don't need to export it again. Okay, and there it is. And I'll just quickly add the colours. And again, you can see that the colours really don't change. Well, we'll be going on how to... Um, change the colours in a later tutorial. Okay, I'll just use this cone to demonstrate the difference in collision. As you can see that's sitting above the model for the previous tutorial but on the model that we've just created it sits properly and at the rear of the vehicle it does the same if I put it in the right place and just see how close it can get to the headlights as you can see it's getting pretty close but with the second vehicle it's quite a distance away and the last thing we'll do is just flip the vehicles over just to see if we can get a car looking like it's you know flipped over in a crash or something okay that one can only sit straight but the one we've just done you can turn it round you can have it sitting straight or if you rotate it, you can have it sitting at an angle. So there we have it. Three Mustangs, all imported from SketchUp, all with different levels of collision.